Beijing Titans Control, begins to take action against government officials and state-owned enterprise employees. Another ridiculous CCP's officials claim, reduced population quantity, but improved quality. CCP assets Huawei concealed Android system with new interface, drawing ridicule from online community. An additional $100 billion to be poured in the Belt and Road Initiative. Son develops mental disability after two years in military service, mother reports using her real name. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Beijing Titans Control begins to take action against government officials and state-owned enterprise employees. Currently, the Chinese Communist Party CCP, authorities are taking on an increasingly cautious and hostile approach toward overseas Chinese. According to a Reuters report, a document they have access to discloses that the CCP is examining the overseas relationships of Chinese individuals with the goal of identifying connections between employees and the CCP government and individuals and families in other countries. Previously, these restrictions exclusively targeted senior CCP government officials and national administrative personnel with access to sensitive information. However, they have now been extended to include the 7 million civil servants and 70 million state-owned enterprise employees. These restrictions include measures like prohibiting overseas travel, imposing stricter limits on travel frequency and duration, introducing complex approval processes, and providing pre-departure security training. Furthermore, statements from the individuals under review suggest that after the authorities reopened the borders in January, the scrutiny of overseas travel became even more stringent. For example, according to an individual working at a major branch of the CCP-controlled National Development Bank, the branch has banned employee foreign travel this year. Two other bank employees disclosed that lower-level employees in the Beijing and Shanghai branches of the China Construction Bank are restricted to one personal trip abroad per year, with a maximum duration of 12 days. A teacher from Zhejiang province revealed that even some public school teachers are now encountering fresh limitations on their foreign travel. The report cited the remarks of two experts, indicating that these actions reflect Xi Jinping's increased vigilance in the name of national security, especially given the strained relations with Western countries. Mr. Neil Thomas, a China politics researcher at the Asia Society Policy Institute, has noted that Beijing's concerns about espionage threats from Western nations are becoming increasingly paranoid. Preventing government employees from traveling abroad may be a tactic to decrease foreign involvement in espionage activities. Nonetheless, some analyses suggest that as CCP's political control tightens, more Chinese citizens are trying to leave the country and some are even risking illegal entry into countries like the United States through clandestine routes. According to recent reports by the American news outlet Axios, the number of Chinese people illegally entering the United States has surged, reflecting the ongoing resistance of the Chinese population to the CCP's harsh domestic policies. Another ridiculous CCP's officials claim, reduced population quantity, but improved quality. Despite China's total population experiencing negative growth for the first time last year, the quality of the population is improving at a faster rate, the declaration by Xinhua Yun, the deputy director of China's National Bureau of Statistics, has stirred up mainland's online community in recent days. In more detail, on October 18, as the National Bureau of Statistics of the CCP released its latest data, Xing emphasized that China's population structure had undergone significant changes marked by a declining birth rate and accelerating aging, leading to shifts in the total population. Although there was negative growth in the total population last year, it still remains relatively large, with nearly 900 million people in the working age demographic. Furthermore, he claimed that the population's quality has improved, with an average of 10.93 years of education and 240 million individuals having higher education. 10.93 years of education means that, on average, individuals in China's population have completed nearly 11 years of schooling. In short, he stated that despite the decreasing population, the rate of improvement in population quality is faster. Xing's assertion faced backlash on the mainland internet, with a wave of comments such as 
please refrain from using the term improving population quality casually. In the past, people didn't need to lock their doors at night, children didn't require daily escorts to school, and there was no need to worry about helping someone up. Now, we can only say that the standard of living has improved, but that doesn't necessarily indicate an enhancement in the quality of the population. Another netizen said, I don't see that. Instead, it seems like the quality has declined. Ten years ago, there were very few tourists trampling the grass at Dalian Shinghai Square, but now there's litter everywhere, and the lawn has turned into a desert. One netizen even asked in reverse, so, are you suggesting that as long as the quality improves, we don't need to worry about the declining population? That's not an honest statement. Furthermore, many netizens ridiculed the CCP for its consistent failure to address problems. They always seem to find rising indicators and keep searching for more. Consistently focus on the positive side, refusing to acknowledge any problems or take responsibility. Rather than addressing and solving all problems, they offer explanations. CCP assets Huawei concealed Android system with new interface, drawing ridicule from online community. A significant piece of news related to the CCP's asset, the giant Chinese technology company, Huawei. The company has previously proudly claimed to have independently developed the Harmony OS, or Hongmeng in Chinese, mobile operating system. However, it has been exposed for essentially wrapping an Android system in a shell. In more detail, as of October 18, the discussion surrounding the Huawei mobile operating system displayed on the China Construction Bank's mobile app continues among Chinese internet users. One user inquired, I just opened the China Construction Bank app on my Huawei phone and the device binding section displays as Android 12. What does everyone else's show? This question quickly received over 2,000 likes. Some netizens jokingly commented, I may not understand code, but the China Construction Bank app should, shouldn't it? Among these comments, there are some from the so-called patriotic netizens, such as, why do many people claim that Harmony OS and Android are related, even though they cannot understand the code? However, the outcome turned out to be quite the opposite. Numerous netizens have shared screenshots of their app interfaces after launching the China Construction Bank app on their Huawei phones providing proof that the device binding section of the app indeed shows the Huawei mobile operating system as Android 12, whether it's a Huawei phone with the Harmony OS system pre-installed or one that has been upgraded to Harmony OS. Internet users commented, accusing China Construction Bank of hurting national sentiments. Some netizens recommended summoning China Construction Bank's responsible individuals for immediate discussions and mandating corrections. There were even demands to confiscate the unlawfully acquired profits of China Construction Bank. Before this incident, the connection between China Construction Bank's app and Huawei's phones had already been a topic of interest. In a report from the Tung Washin Financial Research Center on September 4, investors asked if China Construction Bank's app was planning to introduce Harmony OS 4.0 exclusive applications because Harmony OS 4.0 was said to be no longer compatible with Android applications. At that time, China Construction Bank responded by stating that Harmony OS 4.0 is still compatible with Android applications, indicating there was no need to update the China Construction Bank app. The strong compatibility between Harmony OS and Android systems, combined with Harmony OS being identified as Android on several occasions, confirms the close relationship between Harmony OS and Android. In the past, a programmer leaked the source code of Harmony OS, alleging that Huawei had made minor changes to the Android code, such as renaming some external functions. However, due to the code's complexity, many internal functions remained unchanged, causing Harmony OS to frequently be identified as Android by certain devices or apps. An additional $100 billion to be poured in the Belt and Road Initiative China's third Belt and Road Summit Forum for International Cooperation opened at around 10 a.m. on October 18 in Beijing. According to China Central Television reports, after the opening remarks by Chinese Vice Premier Ding Xiaoxiang, Chinese leader Xi Jinping, Russian President Vladimir Putin, and Kazakh President, Indonesian President, Argentine President, Ethiopian Prime Minister, and United Nations Secretary General delivered speeches in sequence. 
Inside the venue, Xi Jinping praised the Belt and Road Initiative, saying that the program has achieved vigorous development and fruitful results in the past 10 years, and China's door to the outside world will be open wider and wider through the program. He also urged the other participants to advocate the Belt and Road Initiative, saying the joint development of the initiative will bring win-win results. Notably, Xi Jinping pledged that, in the next 10 years, China will set up a financing window with a total amount of 700 billion yuan, approximately 95.68 billion US dollars, and the Silk Road Fund will add an additional 80 billion yuan, approximately 10.9 billion US dollars, to support the joint construction of the Belt and Road projects. It means that a total of 780 billion yuan, approximately 106.6 billion US dollars, will be poured into the Belt and Road initiatives. However, at the plenary meeting of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization held earlier this year, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi bluntly stated that the so-called One Belt, One Road initiative is actually a loan-assisted construction method for China's recipients of aid. Some countries participating in the initiative fell into a debt trap and were forced to be controlled by the Chinese government. U.S. Secretary of the Navy Richard Spencer has once directly criticized China's Belt and Road Initiative as weaponizing capital. While the Chinese authorities were promoting the Belt and Road Initiative in a high-profile manner at the summit, police officers outside the venue were on high alert at major traffic intersections, railway stations, and long-distance stations in Beijing. A Beijing resident told Radio Free Asia that, starting from the morning of October 16, traffic control was implemented on East and West Chan Street in Beijing and on the roads leading to the venue. Many vehicles were unable to drive normally. In addition, human rights activists, including her, were also detained for no reasons. The Beijing citizen added that she saw militiamen wearing camouflage uniforms on duty on the overpass. Their armbands read Chinese militia, which made her exclaim she has never seen that scene before. Son develops mental disability after two years in military service, mother reports using her real name. October 16, a video posted on Twitter by an account called Truth Media shows the mother holding her identification card and making the official report. She accused three instructors and one head of the health department from the Chinese, Communist, Army 77th Group Army of turning things upside down, deceiving, ignoring the truth, bullying the weak, and speaking nothing but lies, all while acting with impunity and disregarding any sense of morality. This mother stated that after her child graduated from college, he chose to enlist in the army. During his two-year military service, instead of receiving proper military training and education, her son suffered differential treatment. He was assigned to guard duty at a sentry post for two consecutive months without any rotation. Furthermore, he was subjected to prolonged unjust beatings, humiliation, and abuse by military officers. Her son, tormented and in extreme pain, attempted to take his own life twice, once by jumping from a building, but his comrades intervened. In response, the squad leader violently knocked him down, slapped him, and subjected him to derogatory language, leading him to be hospitalized. The mother also shared an incident from October 2021 during a grenade training exercise. Her son failed to meet the required physical standards and was subjected to a severe beating by his squad leader, resulting in two rib fractures. Despite his injuries, he was compelled to participate in further training. His pleas for medical attention went unanswered, and the squad leader's intimidation subjected him to public humiliation. When he couldn't run, he was forcibly dragged by other soldiers, causing both physical and emotional trauma. Only months later during a routine checkup was it discovered that his fractures had improperly healed, leaving permanent damage. Now, her son has become mentally disabled and is living in a mental hospital. The military concealed these events and failed to inform the parents. It wasn't until July 7 when the military demanded hospital meal expenses from her son, who couldn't afford to pay, that the family learned about his painful experiences during the two years of service. In addition, in September, the military violated their commitment and forcefully discharged her son. She revealed the military's callous response to her son's abuse, as they attempted to shift blame by claiming he had pre-existing medical issues prior to enlistment. She criticized the military's actions as inhumane and amoral. 
She also found it unbearable that a healthy child, who had aspired to serve his country in the military, returned home after just two years as a mentally disabled individual. She said, this is a heartbreaking reality that strikes a chord with parents worldwide, and I believe parents everywhere would find it agonizing to accept such a painful truth. This mother's official report of bullying within the Chinese Communist Army has been gaining momentum online, sparking heated discussions. The well-known dark side of the Chinese Communist Army has ignited intense online debates, with some netizens openly declaring the military to be a mere extension of the CCP. Some compassionate netizens have cautioned this mother, pointing out that in China, such reports are unlikely to succeed and can lead to tragic consequences. Making an official report with one's real name? Reporting can make you a target for stability maintenance, and it might even result in the misfortune of being arrested. As previously reported, Bai Ling, a Chinese-American actress who currently lives in the United States, had revealed in an exclusive interview with the Associated Press many years ago that she had a dark chapter of being sexually bullied while serving in the cultural troop of the Chinese Communist Army. This eventually led to her pregnancy, and she underwent an abortion using a pseudonym. Bai Ling emphasized that her traumatic experience of abuse by Chinese Communist officers was something too painful to revisit and it remained a secret kept from her parents for many years. Bai Ling also revealed the unfortunate reality that she didn't even recognize the actions of her superiors as abuse in the past due to China's cultural context of respecting and obeying your superiors. One wouldn't dare to question anything and would simply comply. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.